You are tuned in to episode 206 of the Brain Software Podcast coming at you from Toronto, Canada. I'm Chris Thompson, and today, Mike Mandel and I will give you the secrets to mastering hypnosis. So keep listening and watching. Disclaimer. Warning. The only purpose of this disclaimer is to give me an opportunity to say, Lucci, mission accomplished. Hey, everybody. Great to be here. I just got hired as a studio hand here at Mike Mandel Hypnosis. Chris Thompson's got me on the payroll now, and I can even earn an extra $40 a week. I'm hoping to become a hypnotist and start an awesome career once I finish high school. Hold on there, Sven Galli. Sounds to me like someone's getting too big for his britches. Remember, son, the Shizjig Corporation bought out Mike Mandel Hypnosis last week. So if you're working for anyone, you're working for me. And as your new boss, the first thing I'm going to do is give you a substantial pay cut for insubordination. And to start things on the right foot, I'm laying you off until September. Remember, son, you're still just Danny. Yeah, I guess so, Dad. You guessed right, Captain Showoff. But more importantly, whatever happened to that old tranquility we used to threaten to fire for insubordination? I don't know, Dad. <laughs> These are days of victory. So let's welcome to the studio the world's number one hypnotic Bowler. Hurrah! One half of the hypnotic dynamic duo, me being the other half, and the Keith Richards of hypnosis, Mike Mandel. No, Chris, not the Keith Richards of freaking hypnosis. I just and I don't want to be Ron Wood either. I just keep oh, bringing man. that up. All right. So we are doing an awesome podcast here right now on the secrets of mastering hypnosis. This is going to be a tighter podcast with yes, still it loads is. of fun, though. Yes, we want to get to lunch. All right. So we've got to go into the three think tank words, which are to speak spontaneously generate some sort of creative, imaginative well, connection yes, to the Chris, topic. But do we do promotion Oh, right yeah, now? yeah, sure. Yes. Well, why don't we say this right now? Let's that say we are, uh, we're going to Hypno Thoughts Live. Las Vegas. HTLive.net. And you want to be there. It's at the end of July. Hopefully this episode goes live before yeah, then. I'm sure it, it does. The second thing we want to do is mention that it is finally back after three years or what will have been a three-year hiatus from live classroom training due to Everyone knows what. Problems. We are back and we are teaching the week of October 31st in Toronto. You will find information about the architecture of hypnosis in Toronto at the on our events page. Hypnotic World Epicenter on our events page. Yes, on our we are, events we're page. We're back, Chris. I had to interrupt because I'm just so I, glad I, we're I, back. I won't accuse you of interrupting me while delivering a URL because I was just saying on <laughs> our Correct. events page. That's go right. to MikeMandelHypnosis.com. Go to the events page. You will see where you can sign up to the architecture of hypnosis. Come and train with us. We get a great limited. new venue. All right. Now, Think we words let's do it so the first one delving delving like delving into a topic delving into the delver we're gonna delve into the mastery secrets of hypnosis right now so there uh, you go uh, what the heck is a lappet i think i, know. I have no idea i think it's <laughs> okay. L, uh, so the second word L -A -P -P -E -T. and the, ross will put these up during editing l-a-p-p-e-t that's yeah. the second word what is that a lappet <laughs> i'm gonna say this without you getting stupid about all right it. all right it's i think it's a small dangling bit of hanging flesh okay that's very strange all right good so, good self-restraint there chris so i suppose how does that connect to the topic well sometimes there are things left unattended to unattended, unattended. you unattended don't want to be to. delving into yeah, the lappet that's is what right. we're saying you want to attend to things attend properly. to everything it needs okay. attending to third the word Mike, to the bishop is ducal now, that one i know let's spell it for d-u-c-a-l d-u-c-a-l ducal means pertaining to a dukery a dukedom what? So you have a duke. Are you making a duke, all of this no, up? No, a duke has his, his area. His It's not a dukedom, but he can duke in the dukery if he's a duke. And a ducal means pertaining to a duke. So his his ducal knowledge, it means his knowledge as a duke. Like a, the duke of, when you the see duke a pub, it's called the duke, duke of duke, Kent or the duke, duke of this. Of Earl, duke. Yeah. Okay. So you want to be delving into the lappet. And it'll be a very ducal thing. To, if we can apply these, it's going <laughs> to be these, miraculous. If any of these words fit into the conversation, there you go. All right. So, so now straight into the real do good you content. master hypnosis, Chris? And the answer is simple. It's mm -hmm. simple. 
And the first thing we have on the list is, and if you follow these things, you really will become an amazing hypnotist. Now, when we teach hypnotists and they come to Toronto mm -hmm. and then they do this, they come back and learn again from us, do the same course, they become master hypnotists. This isn't a master's degree or anything. It's something we award for people who've gone to a higher level. But we're talking about just generally getting good at hypnotists. So you, uh, hypnotists. Getting good at hypnotism. We'll edit that out. Getting good it's at saying hypnosis. getting good at hypnosis so that you can feel you have a degree of mastery. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, so let's talk about that mastery is going to come from the basics. Yes. And we often talk about the 80-20 principle, whether mm. it comes to your life or yeah. anything, really. The 80-20 principles was wonderful. Yeah, that slurring my words again. The 80-20 principle is this wonderful idea that most of the results are going to come from a minimum number of minimum, inputs. Minimum inputs, minimum effort, that 20% of minimum inputs, inputs will give us the maximum amount of And that's response. what we're going to talk about here is what are those 20% of things that if you can do them really well, you will come across and be a very skilled hypnotist. Okay. Now I don't typically do suggestibility tests because I don't, I don't generally need them, but you I, did have on used stage. Them. I have used them on stage and I've used them in therapy the odd time, not very often when people want that sort of thing. But learning a couple of suggestibility tests is a great way to start because it will build your confidence. Mm -hmm. And remember the purpose of suggestibility test is what? Heteroaction. Yes. It's not to check if they're suggestible. We already know they are because they're Define heteroaction beings. for those heteroaction listening. Heteroaction means when someone completes completes a hypnotic task or suggestion, it increases their predisposition to perform another but totally different hypnotic task or suggestion. Andre Weitzenhofer, General Techniques of Hypnotism, 1957. So if you do a couple of suggestibility tests, you're building heteroaction. But more importantly, if you can do them, it'll up your confidence in your ability to yes. deliver commands and suggestions to your audience, to your clients, because when you're doing hypnosis, whether it be conversational Ericksonian flowy style yeah. or very directive, and you'll probably use elements of both, you want to be congruent in delivering something with a bit of a theatrical flair to it, right. where the suggestibility tests come in, because they're typically used more in the entertainment scenario or street hypnosis scenario. So if you're congruent about that, then when you're sitting down with a client one-on-one, -on -one, it's going to be very easy for you to be directive when needed. It, you know, that, Chris, that's bang on because mm -hmm. when you're doing a suggestibility test, whether it's hand clasp or magnetic fingers or whatever you're doing, mm -hmm. the bottom line is when you're delivering it congruently, you're delivering it as though you expect it to work. And when you do that, your presentation skills will go through the roof. And when you get good at doing this, then you'll find it very easy to create trance. When you congruently deliver a suggestibility test, the person responds, then you'll be confident and your trance work will be even easier. Okay. Now we've got, I'm looking at the list here for the first time. I know. Well, and and as usual, as can. you've put a ton of I'm stuff in I'm always afraid of not putting enough because I'm always rushing to get to this. Well, I want to, yeah, I want to make sure that we really do 80, 20 this, right? Well, so here we go. We may skip a few things or, or consolidate, but yeah. Yeah, the he, rest of it can just be a, a, a lappet that's hanging and we never right. get to. Oh, oh brilliant. He's done it. All right. So you've written down here inductions. inductions. Right. Now I say uh, learn some good inductions. I say three is enough. If you master three inductions right off the bat, that will give you flexibility. Mm -hmm. And we recommend you learn three totally different ones. We have hundreds and hundreds. I mean, quite literally. Our friend John Cerboni has like four or five hundred inductions. Yeah, and they're all based and on the same principles. The so same if principles. you understand the principles, which is essentially that you're going to focus the client's attention on something. It could right. be your words. It could be a physical object. It could be feeling. a, a dukedom. Yeah, but the focus is, right. and you can combine it. Of course, you can focus on something as an object while having them focus on your words. Or and focus really get on your internal feelings of, or exactly. whatever. Now, I said to the first one, I put that damnable uh, dursative progressive muscle relaxation. Why? Because number one, it's the most widely used hypnotic induction in the world. Secondly, it is very easy to do. And although unless you're very congruent and keep it moving to some degree, you'll probably not get a really deep, robust trance. You can use deepeners to get them there, though. But progressive muscle muscle relaxation is pretty surefire as Dr. Krasner discovered. So we say, yeah, add that because that's what a lot of people expect anyway. Oh, I'm going into a trance. I'm going to be very relaxed. So progressive muscle relaxation. I said another, any catalepsy producing induction, kin kinesthetic ambiguity or, you know, breathing with the hand, little shelf as we teach, any of these that cause a cataleptic limb can then be cascaded into a powerful trance. And finally, Chris, what about just limb, Let's just pause, let's pause on that oh, for a moment pausing. because when it comes to 
catalepsy, we teach a lot of inductions that involve physical touch. But now if you're doing hypnosis over Zoom, yeah. it's important to understand how to use the same principles and apply them in an online session. And that's why in the Mike Mandel Hypnosis Academy, we've got an entire module called Online Inductions. So check it out if you're interested. And it's, gr it's great, actually, that we mm -hmm. created that because now a lot of people who did not work online are working online exclusively. And they're going, oh, and they're oh very this is easy. Doing it. Yeah, yeah, it's easy. You can have your pajamas on as long as you've got a good shirt so, on. So sorry, your tell. third option now was invitation, invitation into trance. Into trance. So, you want to explain that? Yeah, sure. So, the idea of an invitation into trance is it's also called the purely verbal induction. And the way we do that is we invite the client into a hypnotic experience. We're having them close their eyes and typically imagine things that are happening. And we're using a combination of pacing and leading. And I would say pacing and leading is probably the biggest foundational piece of Ericksonian right. hypnosis. Right. A lot of NLP stuff we'll do in the next video. We'll add to that. But interestingly, yeah, I think you actually said beautifully and hypnotic trance. And hypnotic like trance. An, I'm go. an historian. Mm -hmm. You know, I drink an Heineken. <laughs> there so, you go. Okay. Again, I've got the points. You want to get great at this stuff, study the greats, read about the greats. I said from, you know, Bernheim in the 1800s of the Lebo, and that'll show you what is possible just with direct suggestions. Some of the neurological issues they dealt with, like sciatica. Mm -hmm. Bernheim was a neurologist, so he knew what he was doing. And then read some of the modern living masters. And we say people like Antony and Freddie Jacqueline, James Tripp, uh, Igor Letohovsky. These are people who are alive today who are brilliant. Brilliant at hypnosis. Now, I'm going to push back on this a bit uh -oh. and say, I, I think that this is not the order in which we would recommend. Oh, not, not the order. So Definitely not. We'll, Just throw the we'll, stuff out. Yeah, we're throwing it out there. But I want to point out that if you want to learn it in an appropriate order, start by learning the hypnotic language toolbox that we yes. teach in our free course. New, it's called NUVI, which is Nominalization, Nominalization Unspecified Verb induction. induction. It's free. We'll make sure that it's linked to from this video, make sure this podcast. But you'll start by learning the foundational concepts of Ericksonian hypnosis, pacing and leading, basic stuff, how to generate a never ending sentence in which you are using hypnotic language patterns that you can learn if you want right, to. Right, right. Then you're going to learn the direct model of hypnosis, which we'll be speaking about here, I'm sure, shortly. After that, after you got those basics nailed, go ahead and enhance your knowledge and learning by studying those greats that Mike mentioned. Right. And if we're studying the greats, mm -hmm. you have to, at some point, when you've got a good grounding, study the work of Milton H. Erickson, MD. Erickson, to our mind, was the greatest hypnotist who ever lived. There are people who will argue that Elman was, or you know, some will even argue that Mesmer was, which is ridiculous. But Erickson had such a, an incredible position in hypnosis. His work demands study. If you just want to look at some of the weirdness and the richness of <laughs> yeah. hypnosis, yeah, no, no, I'm just laughing. <laughs> yeah, the right. weirdness. There is, some, yeah. there is a fair amount of weirdness. In, I say in weirdness the... hypnosis. Chris goes, <laughs> 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 there All we right. go. So, All right, so. What about metaphors? All right, metaphors, stories that change lives. There's various, we're not going to get into them. I think we probably no. have an entire we probably have an entire podcast oh, that we've least. done on metaphors, yeah. maybe even a two-parter yeah. from a little while back before we switched to the video format. But metaphors, stories that change lives, you're telling people stories that they never look at and go, oh, he's talking about me. No, it's no. a story. It's about something else. Essentially, it comes across as something else. But people learn by mapping things across. We learn by associating. So the brain's pattern matching system takes the elements of the metaphor. Mm -hmm. The conscious mind is is taken in by the content and entertained by it. The unconscious mind sees the pattern and applies it. So metaphor is great. Erickson, of course, was probably the best of that. I said another key thing, Chris, is to speak like a hypnotist. Right. Learn the nomenclature, the, the rich argot of our field. Now, we already said earlier when I said, oh, I'm going to push back on the order here, learn the language skills of conversational hypnosis, pacing and leading, never-ending sentences, linkages, nominalizations, unspecified verbs. We've got a free course for you on that. Yeah. And if you want to go more, of course, we've got the Mike Mandel Hypnosis Academy. We've got Foundation Live, our online Foundations Live hybrid program where you are practicing with us, with partners. It's a lot of fun. But you're building those language skills first. And then on top of the conversational language, you still want to understand that hypnotic voice and the way to craft congruent, yes, very to redirect the confident sounding and offer double binds and all mm -hmm. these wonderful things that can be done. Yes. And I, I concur. That is probably the most important thing about the order is get the hypnotic language down. And the rest of it, I'm just saying, throw it all at it. When I'm 
got into hypnosis to a huge degree in 1975. I was already doing it for 10 years, but 75 became professional. And I immersed myself in hypnosis mm -hmm. and mentalism. I mean, every freaking waking moment, Chris. Now, you, you now I said that you learn the, <laughs> learn the argot, the, the rich nomenclature of our field. Well, you've got to know the terms. Somnambulism, catalepsy, what an induction is, psychomotor retardation, waking hypnosis, direct suggestion. All of these things are important to know because if someone asks you about being a hypnotist, you know, it's, well, there's this thing we kind of do where... You get, and uh, no, you, you, you want to have your client or someone else look who at is, you and say, Dang. or just you don't want someone who's not Dang. the expert to know basic words about hypnosis that Dang. you don't know, right? right? And also, please, this is a stickler with me say hypnotist and hypnotize, not, not like that, hip not hypnotist. I'm a hypnotist. I hypnotize you. It's an N-O, not an M-A. Yeah. There's no reason to sound like trailer trash. Please speak properly. Words are our tools, as Dabney Ewan said, and it's important to apply them correctly. So now, learn to observe, all right, Chris. Now we're, we're getting <laughs> down to a... Actually, a point that should be the very first thing you consider as foundational. Well, you want to master yes. hypnosis, you got to observe people, and we call this calibration, right? You're looking, you're listening, mm. you're paying attention to whatever yes. feeling you get in your body because you're not reaching out and feeling what's going on with a client necessarily. That would be weird unless it's just like lifting up their arm and dropping it right. for an arm drop test or testing for relaxation in the neck. Or something. But you may get feelings in your body yeah. that you have to pay attention to in yourself too. So if you're responding to something and oh what is that but uh you need to be observing you need to be listening yeah why is that well because my mentor derek bomber used to say you can't see what you can't see you can't hear what you can't hear you can't feel what you can't feel and these are all tautologies they give you no information it's mm -hmm. like saying it is what it is what's a stupid management speak saying it is what it is it is what it is shut up and it but isn't what it isn't but when you say yeah everything is what it is and everything isn't what it isn't you said nothing but when some, when derek said you can't see what you can't see what he meant was you can't see what you're not, not looking, looking for. for. You have to be able to observe the other person and see shifts happening in their external behavior that will indicate to you that they are being drawn into a transic experience. So you want to understand some basic, what we call external trans indicators. We only call them that because that's what they're called. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Because that's what they actually are. <laughs> hypnotic, <laughs> hypnotic masks. So, so calibrate mm -hmm. other people. A, B, C. Always be calibrating. Always be observing. Notice for shifts. And make sure you know the external external trans indicators yeah. as well. We'll look through a couple of really quick here. So the hypnotic mask, that face, that, that faceless expression. <laughs> yeah. That, that blank, gone. emotionless expression yeah, that people will get shifts. because they're very relaxed. The breathing shift usually slower, deeper very from creative, the belly. Very artistic, they may have a slower blink reflex or, or not at absent. all yep. if they close their eyes their eyelids may flutter I'm trying to fake that it's, it's very difficult to fake um, may get a hypnotic rash sometimes people yeah, get sometimes a bit of a hollow in the neck mm -hmm. we've seen some really cool examples right. of that so those are some typical hip, uh, hypnotic external trance indicators right now realize too nothing beats practice 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 okay. practice doing hypnosis is one of the most important things to do if you want thank to learn you. hypnosis thank, thank you, you. No, I thank want, you. so I want to say this about um, maybe saying. about a year ago we yeah. started doing a focus group with our students in the Mike Mandel Hypnosis Academy and the main thing we were asking is hey, how can we make this better yeah. what are you missing what do you need and the big thing everyone said is I need more practice, practice. now obviously people could self connect in the group. They could say, hey, I'd like Our to practice. Term. Who'd like practice with me? <laughs> self-connect. They could self-organize, let's say. He was, uh, stumbled into the room and he was self-organizing. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like the sound of that. Uh, he should have locked uh, the door. So we launched a program called Foundations Live to solve that because it's dedicated practice and feedback, which is really cool. You'll find a link in the description or in the show notes if you're interested. But the key peeing, the key being you must practice. Peeing. You said peeing. The key peeing. Yeah, it was really weird. We're not even going to edit that out. No. That's, that's, how, that's how transparent we are about our own mistakes. <laughs> what? Um, the, no, we're not. We're <laughs> we'll edit that so, out. Yeah, and that. And that too. And that too. Um, and that if and that, you only watch videos yeah. or only watch other people do hypnosis, sometimes people show up to people show up to the practice yeah. and they go into observer only mode because they're a little intimidated and they don't want to do the practice yet. They don't feel ready. Well, if you do that, you never get good at it, right? If you only ever watch other people ride right. bicycles, yeah. 
How good do you get at riding a you bike? You don't. It's, it's the same about swimming. You can read books about swimming, but at some point you've got to get in the water. How and, are you at swimming, Mike? Oh, I'm, I'm uh, terrific. I yeah, watch the Olympics every four years. Well, no, no. It's worse yeah. than that, Chris. It's how are you at swimming? And the person says, well, I'm hoping to get good at it. Oh, are you swimming a lot? No, not at all, but I'm reading a lot about yeah, it. Yeah, I'm reading. Yeah, I'm yeah. watching a lot of videos yeah, about it. Yeah, that's ridiculous. So get so out practice, there practice, and practice. do it. And that's why we like to make the Mike Mandela Hypnosis Academy fun mm -hmm. because we give you little challenges that yeah. you can you can start slipping hypnotic language patterns and concepts into everyday like language. Like the slipper. Like yeah. the fun one of doing a never ending sentence and keep doing it until someone stops you and be kind of amazed that it, it took a few minutes. No, oh, yeah, that's, you're mm -hmm. absolutely correct with that. And the less said, the better. Now, join an online hypnosis group. Practice on Zoom. Mm -hmm. So if practicing is one thing, but supervised practice is the I said supervised. <laughs> supervised <laughs> practice yeah. is the best. And make friends with people in the hypnosis community. And just don't expect them to hand you all their secrets. I want to give you an example of this, Chris. All right. When I was performing in the 1980s, there was a couple of there were a couple of good hypnotists came through. Vince Anthony, I Googled him the other day. I can't find him. I don't know if he's still performing. Terry Stokes was a friend of mine back in those days. And and uh, they were both passing through. And a young woman, whose name I will not say, uh, came into being. She started watching a lot of our shows. Her show came into being. She didn't. And she got this great idea. And she was stealing everybody's material and said, let's have a barbecue. And she wanted to invite me and Vince Anthony and Terry Stokes have a barbecue so we could all talk about hypnosis and tell her all our secrets. And then she and, could go and off. Then and then she could go and after copy our clients all your stuff. and yeah. stuff. Yeah. And it's so when you meet people online, work with them, but don't expect them to hand you the keys to the kingdom that they've worked really, really hard to get. We will, though, because we will. <laughs> we're not, not, Mike's we're not, not a, like Mike's other not out. Uh, we're, our, our business is teaching, so That's <laughs> we'll right. teach you everything we know and we won't hold And on that back. note, we have to go to a quick message, Chris. All right. So we now have a special report from Hypno North, Meaford, Ontario. Yeah, how are you now? It's your old pal Bredo here recording this report directly in my brand new iPhone 6 since I dropped my iPhone 5 in the barn. And let's just say it's no longer usable, at least not by anyone who wants to say relatively disease-free. I, I took it into Meaford propane and cell phone service, but they said the sickening thing's bitched. So here's the thing. The snow's finally mostly melted up here in the Great White North, although there's still some drifts to avoid in the hollows and where the parking lots aren't plowed yet. So because it's late June and the weather's improving, I thought I'd crawl under the Dodge Ram and do an oil change in that because it's been running rough since it hit the 600,000 mile mark. And I was starting to think if I didn't deal with it soon, there'd be consequences. And I didn't want to be unable to travel to potential hypnosis patients if the sickening truck got bitched. So there I was. Lying under the Dodge, I heard Eddard pull up in his driveway in his ride him lawnmower because he still doesn't have a driver's license. And I crawled out to see him and Duder dragging a couple of plastic bags full of library books into Eddard's farmhouse. So naturally, I go over to see if the if the dicks have actually learned to read and are now literate in that. And then they yell to come in and there's all these local Gray County books spread out on the table, including books about fishing in Nottawasaga Bay and the history of Owen Sound, the biography of Dave Ellis, who was some dick from Keswick who became the world crokinole champion and then died from alcoholism, who was buried up here in Meaford and a ton of other pieces of completely dull crap and that. And then I noticed Edders has a smug look on his face and Duder's kind of grinning in the grinnery under his greasy mullet. So I ask what's up and naturally they got another money-making scheme, which is so freaking idiotic it's even stupid by Duder's pathetic standards. So listen to this. What they plan to do is study all these library books and then become experts on the history and geography of Gray County as if anyone's remotely interested in anything about the local environs other than trying to figure out a way to get the hell out as quickly as possible before they're completely consumed by boredom and that. But here's the plan. Edward of the famed IQ of 100 and Oh, sorry, he's only got 70, was going to become an expert on everything to do with Meaford, Shallow Lake, Wyarton, and Owen Sound. Then he'd write a book about everything he knows, which should take about 12 seconds. And then he'd put it in the hands of his distributor, who, of course, would be Duder. And once Gray County became world famous, he'd have thousands of people moving up here. And then he'd offer to teach them hypnosis. His old hypnotherapy would probably be what they'd need once it sunk in where they'd move to in that. So I couldn't even speak. I was so dumbfounded by all the lunacy I was listening to. It actually made me feel sick in the same way you get Yet when you're swimming in Beaver River, you accidentally swallow a frog in that. So I just left and crawled back under the dodge. What made it worse is my hands got so cold, the oil change took about two hours. Then I fell into an exhausted sleep in the mud under there. And I must have been gaping in the gapery in my sleep because a bullfrog actually did crawl into my mouth, but I didn't swallow it. So there you are. 
You're now up to date on all the earth-shaking news and pathetic state of hypnosis up here in Hypno North. This is your old pal Bredo signing off by saying thanks once again and good night. Thank you for your update, Bredo. It's always great to hear from you. Now, back to the show. Chris, I think another thing to learn is self-hypnosis. If you're going to master hypnosis, get into some self-hypnotic states. I and think get that a makes a lot it. of sense because as you as you learn more about going into self-hypnosis, you'll get a better appreciation for what hypnosis so-called feels like and how it develops. And even though it's different for everybody, you'll get a sense that it isn't some weird magical state. And then you'll be able to answer questions when your clients ask them. And you'll be able to work on your own stuff as well. Like you, you're mm -hmm. able to increase your confidence in doing hypnosis, fix your own stuff through self-hypnosis. And you, when you've done self-hypnosis a few times, the great thing is you don't even have to do an induction. Anyone at the end of our five-day architecture of hypnosis course in Toronto is able, at the end of the last day, I say, go into hypnosis. And everyone just does. And it's an amazing thing. So it's a good skill to learn. Okay, what else do we have? Um, well, I said learn a simple mentalism effect or two. And this, oh, yeah. This is great because it builds credibility and success. What does the mentalism actually have to do with the hypnosis? And the answer is really Zero. nothing. But when you do something amazing and people tend to think of hypnosis as kind of woo, when you do an, ama an amazing mentalism effect, it adds to your credibility in hypnosis. Your prestige goes up. I mean, if somebody grabs a deck of cards and takes a card out and you apparently don't see it and are able to tell them what it is, mm -hmm. and wow, he's amazing. Yes, and go into a trance now. And they often will. So use a few mentalism effects. And even some therapists will do this in their office. They'll just say, oh, let me show you a really cool thing before we start. Wow, this person is amazing. Yeah, particularly great for working with teens or children because they'll be much more likely to be fascinated by something rather than go, hey, I just paid you a bunch of money. Why are you showing me some trick, right? So <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's right. Or just in general, if, if you're talking to people in any social environment and you can show them that kind of effect. Right. And then they discover, oh, he's also a hypnotist. Your credibility gets this immediate expansion. Bang on. And when I was on stage for 40 mm -hmm. something years, I would almost always start with some mentalism effect or two, which would get the audience involved and start to build credibility. And it made the hypnosis go even easier and better. And likewise, if you want to get hypnosis practice, learn a couple of mentalism effects. Uh, a deck of cards is one of the best things you can get good with because you can create amazing miracles with something you can carry in your pocket. And you blow people's minds if you go to a party. And then the next thing you do is you go into hyp hypnosis with people and do some demonstrations and get some practice. So mentalism effects, magic effects are a great way of getting people involved. Yep. To prove that as something Excellent. people actually do. When we had Freddie and Anthony Jackwin in town for oh, yeah, the training yeah. they did a few years back, Anthony had a deck of cards. He had a couple of effects that he would do at a bar while we were having a, a pint of beer or something. And he would uh, go up to the bartender and show him an effect and then lead that into hypnosis. And that smooth the way into practicing Fantastic. with strangers out in public. So that was an interesting thing. Yes. Okay. We got to the three don'ts. Okay. You, you won't get, you won't get full of yourself. This. I would mm -hmm. say, don't get full of yourself with that. You will get full of yourself when you start doing hypnosis. There's a tremendous sense of power in it, which is an illusion because you don't have power over the person. But when you start getting people in and out of trances and doing these amazing things, you will think you're great. It, it happens to all of us, but the, that's fine. And you are great. You are great. But make sure you don't cross these three boundaries. Do not say, don't diagnose anything. You know, oh, you sound like you're depressed. Let me help you with that. Don't diagnose, don't treat for any kind of disease or illness, mm -hmm. unless you're a doctor or psychologist, or psychiatrist, or, you know, allowed to do that. And the third one is don't prescribe. You know, if you're helping someone with something and they're looking for weight management, you say, oh, you should eat this exclusively, or you should drink more water. You are now prescribing. And that is a very, very dangerous position to be in. Right. Uh, final couple of points here. Always find out what the law says about hypnosis in your area. It's worth yeah. investigating for the most part hypnosis is an unregulated industry for the anyone most part one can call them a hip call themselves i think everywhere anyone can call themselves a hypnotist right not everywhere can someone call themselves a hypnotherapist right. that is and we recommend just staying away from that term for good practices i like the term consultant mm -hmm. hypnotist or consulting hypnotist yeah or it's a nice unconscious one. coach or that was my certified term. hypnotist or whatever yeah. the heck you the want to call yourself weird stuff. unless you're a therapist from another sort of industry i would avoid calling yourself a hypnotherapist right right most people are searching on google for hypnosis not hypnotherapist good to keep anyway, in mind hat tip to our friends jason Lennon and richard nongard who mentioned that on one of their podcasts a few years ago. Excellent. Want to talk about being ecological? 
Yeah, always be ecological. Uh, this is really important. Always think ecology first of mm -hmm. the person you're working with. I Meaning if you're doing street hypnosis, don't have them standing on the edge of a curb where they can step out in traffic or they can just step off the curb and sprain their ankle or something or break their ankle. Make sure mm -hmm. you do very, very careful management of your subjects. If you're doing street hypnosis, keep them safe, keep them away from dangers, recognize it is incumbent upon you to look after them. And likewise, look after your own ecology and protect yourself from ruinous lawsuits, which can happen. Okay. And we'll wrap up with this final point, which is get some training. You take this it's, one, Chris. It's of course, very easy to learn hypnosis. And like anything, the better the teacher the more fun and the better the result you have. I remember having lots of teachers in school. Some were just amazing, like my grade 11 chemistry teacher, Mr. Shane. He made it fascinating and fun. And then there was Madame Bones, our French teacher from grade three. And not she just screamed name. that. No, that was her actual name. Shut up. Yeah, her, I yeah, hope she's actually, not watching this. No, I think she died many years ago. She was quite old already when I was a kid. But French was a disaster to learn when we had her because <laughs> all she did was scream at everyone. <laughs> and that is not good quality. So anyway, no. <laughs> while something can be easy to learn, the quality of the, the quality of the, the quality of the teaching, the quality of the pronunciation affects the quality of the teaching and is directly going to impact your results. So get good teachers. We obviously teach this stuff and we think we're pretty good. We also bring in a lot of really awesome guest trainers. Many the names best trainers in the world here. are our friends. So and I'm saying stick with the best. Yeah. And go to conferences, watch their videos, watch their training programs, learn from a variety of excellent trainers. If you want to check it out, you can come to the Mike Mandel yes. Hypnosis Academy. Brilliant, Chris. And now you have the empowering question. For All right. Us. Let's do the empowering question for episode 206. Where are the gaps in my own hypnosis knowledge, and how great will it be when I learn all that I need to become a true hypnotic rock star? Wow. And I've got a quick meta five for you. I started playing chess when I was five years old. My father taught me. He didn't play well. Taught me a lot of things that I didn't that were completely wrong, but you could just castle multiple times to get out of <laughs> trouble and stuff. Anyway, I got into the game. I started reading books on it when I was in my early 20s, studied and studied and studied, got chess computers, studied and studied, won a couple of master level games, which is 2200 rating and above. But my rating, I could never get past about 1800 myself, no matter what I did. And I still made blunders over and over and over. And I finally realized, Chris, my brain doesn't work for chess. It's too many fine details. And I found the game that works for my brain, which is a big picture brain. Backgammon. Backgammon changed everything. I found that if I work the way my brain wants to work, whether it's doing what we do for a living or even in a game, the results are much better. Thanks, everybody, for listening. This has been Brain Software, episode 206. Yes. And it's been awesome how to become a true master of hypnosis through the basic secrets. So go ahead and check out the Mike Mandel Hypnosis Academy. We're very kind in offering a free trial for all that we do, which is pretty awesome. So if you're interested in learning more about hypnosis, you can explore so much of what we have to offer just with the free trial. There's no obligation. If you cancel during the trial, you're never billed. And if you want to go on with us, you can check it out for a couple of weeks and say, yeah, this is pretty awesome. I want to stick around. All right. We'll see you in the next podcast. Thanks again. And, and good night. night.